Hey, Brand Builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen to this interview. We are so excited to bring you this information and wanted to let you know that, hey, there's no sales pitch coming uh, from anything that we do. This is all our value add to you and the community. However, if you are somebody who is looking for specific strategies on how to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you. And we offer a free call to uh, everyone that's interested in getting to know us and is willing to give us a chance to get to know them and share a little bit about what we do. So if you're interested in taking us up on a free strategy call, you can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash summit call. brandbuildersgroup.com slash summit call. Hope to talk to you soon. On with the show. The more time goes on, the more I start to feel like the old man in this industry, in this space. And Chandler Bolt is one of the people that makes me feel that way. Uh, because when I met him, it was years ago, maybe like six years ago. And him and his brother, um, Seth, who is uh, one of the... the one of the members of my one of my favorite bands, if not my the favorite brand, Need to Breathe, they were doing a book together and they were on my old podcast. And I just was like, man, there's something about this guy. Like he's he's legit. They're they are legit. And fast forward to today, Chandler is now the CEO of Self Publishing School um, and selfpublishing.com. So, you know, he's written six best selling books. But um, self-publishing school is like the premier, world's premier leader in helping people publish and self-publish a book and understanding how to do it, what's the process, all the nitty-gritty details, where do we go, how does it work, uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. But he's also an investor and advisor. And, and as an entrepreneur, this company, you know, they've got like 30 plus team members. They're an Inc. 5000 company, three years in a row. Uh, he also hosts a couple podcasts, the Seven Figure Principles podcast, uh, and then the Self Publishing School podcast. And uh, it's so weird because, like, I just am proud of proud of this guy, and uh, and he's a baller. And y'all need to know him, and you need to know what they do. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but I self published six pieces, uh, six different you know bodies of work. They weren't all books before I launched Take the Stairs. So most people think of that as my first book, you know, which hit the New York Times and I was 29, but I had been self-publishing since I was 22 and we don't hear that story a lot. So this is the guy and uh, we got him here live. So Chandler, welcome to the show. Rory, great to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Just proud of you, bro. Um, and I, you know, I have to say at this point, I really have in some ways been out of the self-publishing game, you, you know, other than our clients doing it and, and, and from, a, from a distance, like watching it. So I guess, first of all, let's talk about why self-publish, why and when, um, because there's always that like, you know, hey, I want to be a best-selling author and, you know, do I have to have a traditional publisher? Do I need an agent? You know, is self-publishing does it work? Is it, is it legit? Like, can you just kind of talk about that conceptually? For sure. And I think, and I think probably the first and most important decision um, or question for most people here is like, even before then, like, is a book one of the best things I can do to grow my brand or to grow my business? Right. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the self-publishing versus traditional publishing. And it's like, that's kind of a mechanism or vehicle to take you there. Right. So like, I almost look at it as like two independent questions of like, is a book one of the best things I can do to build my brand, to build my business? And we talk about this all the time, like to get truly get more leads, sales and referrals, which I believe that it is like, you know, I believe that books change lives. I believe that, you know, they change the life of the author and also the reader. I believe, you know, they're one of the best ways to set yourself apart, get your foot in the door. Like we always joke, it's kind of like the key that opens this door to Narnia, like <laughs> this magical <laughs> world of all these opportunities that only exist for published authors, right? But if you have made that the decision, then it's just a matter of which path are you going to take and self-publishing versus traditional publishing. And like the long and short of it is, and this is not just because I run a company called Self-Publishing School or own selfpublishing.com, <laughs> uh, is the long and short of it is, that self-publishing makes more sense for most authors, 
99.9% of people, unless you can get a big advance uh, and, uh, and, and that's, or, and, or you care about distribution, like international distribution, especially that's the only time it really makes sense to, to traditionally publish. Otherwise you're going to be better off um, self-publishing. And, and, you know, it's kind of like, maybe you've heard the, uh, the sayings like banks only loan money to people who don't need it. Right. Right. It's like, well, publishers only give publishing deals to people who don't need them, who can sell the books without them. So if you're Oprah, Seth Godin, Rory Vaden, uh, you can get a big advance. Awesome. Um, I get, maybe- I just so you know, I, I get about the same size advance as both uh, uh, Oprah and Seth Godin. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, my, my, my advances are, are I'm, I'm sure they're the same as what oprah gets yeah. uh-huh. I'm, I'm you know definitely... probably in the, in the obama range like yeah you know, you know. copies on the first day um but i mean that... in, in all seriousness i agree with what you're selling i think self-publishing makes the most sense for the mo- for most authors and the thing that we tell people is we say look if you can't move ten thousand units on opening week and have a plan to move about 50,000 units within two years, you're not ready for traditional publishing and you don't really need it. And the economics of it don't really make sense. So, you know, I I totally, even though I love, I love commercial publishing and I, you know, I love my publisher in that. I think self-publishing is like a, a critical, essential, necessary step in the journey and then people like Seth Godin you know they're kind of going well once I've done a few commercially published books they're going back to self-publishing I don't need to exactly (laughs) for some people it's a step in the journey for other people it's the journey the journey yeah (laughs) like how Elrod I mean obviously that's one of the most one of the biggest self-publishing success stories but he sold millions of copies of that self-published book and so really I mean I think to just like bring this full circle for people what it comes down to is the time that it's going to take you the royalty rates that you're going to make uh, and the cost to publish, like those are the three bigger buckets. And so, so uh, it's traditional publishing is ironically enough, like actually going to take longer. Most people don't know this. It's going to take you two plus years. They're not going to do any marketing of the book. People think that the publishers will market the book. They won't. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then there's the, the cost to publish, which, you know, you got to cover that yourself if you're doing it on your, on your own. So that might be, you know, a couple to a few thousand dollars. Uh, Yeah. uh, Yeah. yeah. Talk, give me, give me the details there. Right. Cause if someone's listening going, okay, if I start looking at self-publishing seriously, realistically, I mean, that is one thing that is awesome about commercially published is we're not paying the cost of the edit of the graphic design, the printing, the warehousing, the shipping. uh, And those are big costs because there's a lot more volume, but when you're self-publishing, you also can do a hundred copy print run, right? Like, how does right. that, what are the, how much does that actually cost and, and, and who does it and how do you do it? Yes, yeah, all great questions. So there's the cost of, uh, of creation and then cost of production, if you will. Um, so the, so this, if you get a traditional publishing deal, you're going agent, then to hopefully get a deal and get in advance and then they're going to cover the cost of that for you. Then there's this middle ground, which is like hybrid or vanity press which, you know, that might cost five, 10, 15, $20,000 a year you're paying someone to pay the book. So it's like part service, part publisher. And then self-publishing, obviously you're paying for it yourself. And there's really three main buckets of costs. Um, there's, uh, there's cover design, editing, and formatting. Like those are the okay. main three. Uh, and if you don't know what you're doing, you might, you might spend five, 10 grand plus. If you do know what you're doing, you can do it for as cheap as a few hundred bucks if you're like really on the cheap and really bootstrapping um, or you typically a couple thousand bucks kind of in that range, give or take is, is where we see people land. But that's the cost the of creation you're saying. Of creation. Yeah. Yeah. So of, okay. of actually creating a book that's ready to be printed and shipped. And then you have the opportunity to go, if you're self-publishing print on demand, so they'll print it, pack it, ship it, um, when someone clicks purchase, right? So you don't have to hold inventory um, or you can do, like you said, runs of a hundred books or a few hundred books or whatever, but that's the benefit of print on demand is you don't have to hold inventory. It's like, we all know someone who has like 2000 copies of their book in their garage and have had those copies of their book for like years. And right. so that, that's the benefit there from a self-publishing perspective is you don't have to pay to carry that inventory. Um so that's, that's kind of how that works. 
All right. So, you know, when you think about cost of creation, I want to, you know, cover design is obvious, right? It's like you can hire the world's best graphic designer and it's 50 grand, or you can hire someone on Fiverr and it's five bucks. So there's the whole range there. Editing is kind of the same way. It's like reputation and all that sort of stuff. What is formatting? Because that was the thing yeah. that has always like, in the times I've self-published, I was like, holy crap, like there is a lot more work here than I realized. There's so yeah. many details of like, what's the gutter size, which, you know, like between where the book folds, like how far the text sits in the crease of the book. So when you say formatting, you're saying you're paying someone to like lay the book out to be ready for print. Yeah, totally. And, and <laughs> funny timing, uh, hopefully can you, yeah, so it's a, it's a big difference, actually. So uh, <laughs> one thing that we say all the time is your self-published book shouldn't look self-published, right? Mm, and so we, we want a traditional quality book that just happens to be self-published. Because the fact is not many people know um, but uh, what's self-published and what's traditionally published. But what, what you really want to do here is a formatter is someone that takes like think your word doc and kind of what you alluded to a second ago is just like there's the margins there's the bleed there's the all that stuff and then they format it to be a what like a good looking book um mm -hmm. or a, a well formatted kindle book so essentially just making like and, and it can be any variants of just like hey literally just make this a book on the very simple side of things and then and then artistically it could be as complicated as like hey i want images here and i want this formatted this way and i want you know these diagrams and graphs and stuff like that so there kind of varies in complexity but that's the basics uh-huh and so is that part of what you guys help people do is like pair them up with those people of like who actually do that or do you exactly. just go on do you yeah. just go on upwork and grab someone Exactly. So our goal, like when we work with someone, our goal is, is, is three things. Like number one, we want to, we'll save them hundreds of hours in the process. Number two, we'll save them hundreds, if not thousands of dollars uh, in book production costs. So like stuff that uh -huh. we're going to spend money on anyway. Uh, and then number three, it's, we're going to help them make more money by selling more books. Uh, and, but then also using a book to drive business. So that's specific to number two, right? Which is, um, you know, we've negotiated exclusive discounts since we have like our book production partners. Yeah. Uh, and so we've negotiated very similar to what brand builders group yeah. does. We've got like, exactly. you know, these are our copywriters and these are our podcast people and these are our social media, like vendor partners. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it's worth a tremendous amount of just the pain of finding these people and knowing who's legit and like, do they actually do what I need them to do? I mean, that's, that's half the battle. Like, um, so, and then, and then when you talk about print it, pack it, ship it. Okay. So if I have a word doc, so let's, let's say I came to captivating content for brand builders group and I outlined my deal and then I, you know, joined self publishing school and you're going to walk me through from that kind of outline and concept all the way to completion. At some point I have a word doc, then I send it to a formatter. That person lays it out. They probably, the, the finished product is probably a PDF, right? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. A PDF. And then there's on the, I mean, this is getting into the minutia, but on the ebook side of things is a dot EPUB or dot Mobi file. And then on the flip side, it's, it's a well formatted PDF. That's really uh, an InDesign format. So they can be ready to be printed. Exactly. Okay. And so then when you go to print it, so what, what does that mean? Like, do I just like run down to Kinko's and print it? Or you, you find like any printer or there's people who s specialize in printing self-published books or does Amazon print it? Or do you, or, or is there somebody who will print it, pack it and ship it all in one place? Or like, is the answer yes to all of those things? Yes. I, I, yeah. And so <laughs> really it's, it's, like there's, there's, you can go down any path and there's any of those things you can do. We recommend, we recommend Amazon from like a full, full perspective. So like the, okay. their print on demand through KDP print, they'll print it, pack it and ship it. As soon as someone like you or I goes on to Amazon and says, Hey, I want to buy this book. They'll, they'll handle the rest. Okay. Uh-huh. So so if you do it through Amazon, then basically you just kind of like upload the files like for the cover and everything and set the dimensions. And then Amazon will like, they don't really store it in a warehouse because they just print it when a sale comes through. 
but so you don't have like warehousing costs like you would with a normal book where you got to like the publisher has to print a bunch of books and put them in warehouses all over the country. You're not dealing with any of that. And it's already, do they exactly. automatically like index it in Amazon also? Exactly. Okay. So that's, so that's why KDP is like just the easiest on the production side. If you have it formatted properly, but then the key is to have, like you said, how do you make sure it doesn't look like, you know, a chintzy self-published book. And I, you know, I use that term respectfully. All of my initial stuff did. I mean, it was like, it was embarrassing. Like my first books, I you can't find them anywhere deliberately. You <laughs> <anyone. laughs> don't want anyone yeah, to be able to sure, find them. Sure. Yeah. It, so it's, I mean, really good cover and good formatting. Like those are the two things that like, if I'm going to spend, okay. I mean, I spend good money on editing too, but like pay for a good cover designer and then pay for a good formatter that knows what they're doing. This is not your friend or relative or whoever else people try to do that uh, don't do that like play, pay a professional uh, and it doesn't have to be crazy expensive um, but pay a professional and that's what helps make the quality really i mean it's it's indistinguishable and and so when you were talking about earlier like you might be in a few thousand bucks this is really where you're because because when you say you're in a few thousand bucks that's for cover design editing and formatting Exactly. Because you, you're not you're not having to shell out twenty grand to print inventory because it's just exactly. there is no inventory unless someone goes to Amazon and buys it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's a big benefit. And then and then what about buying your own book? Like, do you just go to do you literally just log on to Amazon and go, I want fifty copies and send it to my house? Yeah. Yeah, you can do the same thing. And actually, we're, we're exploring some different options right now that are more cost effective. Because um, I think it used to be about $7.15 landed, um, like okay. the book landed to someone and I would pay, you know, three, $3.25 a, p a book and then plus shipping. And that was landed if I shipped them individually. So that was pretty simple. But now we're just, we're, we're re-exploring this to say, hey, where can we save a dollar or two a book. Can we, can we wholesale print somewhere and then fulfill somewhere else or let's like exploring alternatives of like print pack ship kind of thing. Um, uh -huh. but, but yeah, I mean, you can, uh, the, the most simplistic way to do it is just, I can ship a hundred copies, 200 copies. I do this for speaking gigs all the time, um, directly through KDP print. Uh huh. Okay. And then if you're shipping bulk, they don't charge you the same shipping per book. Or exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They so give your, you your cost goes down a whole lot more. I mean, you might get, you might be four or five bucks a book landed, maybe a little bit more when you're shipping in bulk. Um, so it's, like, it's, yeah. So functionally speaking here, you're like a word document and, and then some editing and a PDF away from a book. Like that's really 100%, the gap yeah. these days. I mean, there's, the ideas and all that sort, you know, the content stuff, uh, of course, but this is doable. I mean, it's doable more today than ever before, ever by far. It, it, yes. And, and not only in my opinion, is it doable, but it's, I, I truly think, and I know it's like, oh, cool. The book guy's talking about how amazing it is to do books. Um, but it, like, I truly think it's one of the best things that you can do for your business. Um, it, 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 and I, I mean, I think this is why you guys integrate this as part of your brand building strategy. Cause you've seen the impact of this for you personally. Totally. But then also for so many other people, I mean, whether it's Lewis house or it's like the piece, people build entire brands off of books, but not only that, it's like, it's, it's the, it's kind of this cataclysmic mechanism, if you will, to get your foot in the door, to d start doing podcast interviews, to start doing speaking gigs, to start like, at least it was for me. Um, and so that's, and, and we've seen that for a lot of people that we work with. It's like, it's, it's one of the first steps. And sure, it might totally. not be the first step. Um, for some people it is, though. for some people it represents like, hey, I've finally consolidated what I believe in, put it in a book. And this is like my first step into um, this world. And for others, maybe it's a step along the journey. Well, like we, we work with like a lot of financial advisors as an example, right? And it's like, they're not trying to sell video courses and all that. They need a credibility piece that takes their 25 years yes. of knowledge and they hand it to somebody and go, and somebody goes, whoa, you're an author. And like, to what you said, if it doesn't look chintzy, the average person on the street has no idea if Simon and Schuster made that book 
or if you printed it with Amazon, if you, if you do the things you're talking about, you pay the money to have it nice, they're going to go, whoa, like it's a big deal. Um, so I like yeah. that you raise the bar there on that like production piece of it. Yeah. And, and then you plug that book into your business and you watch how your business grows. I mean, Dude. it's that financial advisor, their, their close rate might go from 25 to 37% or their average order value might go up 20% or they're getting more leads. Now they're getting more referrals because now all of a sudden, and this is for, especially for businesses like this or um, any brick and mortar businesses, we say, Hey, give two copies of your book to every single new customer, one for them. <laughs> and so now the onboarding process is shorter with that customer. Cause if, if the book is about your methodology, like that you're going to save your team a whole lot of time because they're being indoctrinated in that methodology and you give them the second copy so that they can actively refer you business. So you turn customers into active refers and they're not going to go around town handing out your business card, <laughs> but they will hand, hand a book to book. someone else and say, Hey, you should read this. Like, weren't you trying to start looking at your retirement? Like check out this retirement book. Like, I think it'd be really helpful for you or insert book that solves whatever problem that you solve. And it just, you make it so much easier to refer business your way. So, okay. Uh, the time is flying by. I knew this was just fly by, but it's been so helpful. I think, cause there's, I think it's still a little bit of a black box and most people, are, there's a lot of fear going on here. I want to try to spend a couple minutes on the best seller stuff. Okay. So let's say you go through this, <laughs> this birthing process of creating this thing we call a book. And then how does the bestseller list work? Um, you know, and, and when we talk self-publishing, you know, what we tell people and, and, you know, it's kind of like, you're really talking about an Amazon bestseller. That's really the game. That's really what we're going after with the self-published book. How does the Amazon bestseller list work? What does it take to hit it? How realistic is it? Is it worth the money? Like how many units are we talking about to, to you know, like tell us a little bit yeah. about that. Great question. So there's, there's really two inches of the spectrum, right? There's I'm an Amazon bestseller in underwater basket weaving or some other obscure category, which is like, like a subcategory of a subcategory kind of a thing. And, and that's where I think the term has really been ruined. Uh, and you have so many people just claiming that. And then there's the other end of the spectrum, which is New York Times, right? And, and I think what's important and it's very impressive that you hit the list. It's very hard to hit. Um, you know, the deal, like you got to sell 10 to 12,000 copies within week one, but not, it's also like kind of this breakdown of like, some of them needs to be mom and pop st stores. Some of them needs to be bulk purchases. Some of them needs to be on Amazon. Some of these. Yeah. And so the fact of the matter is when you look at the landscape of lists, you've got kind of four main, you've got New York times, you've got USA today, wall street journal, bestseller, and then Amazon, right? Now, New York yep. Times, most people chase that list. It is an editorial list, which means it's, a, it's an opinion <laughs> uh, by the New York Times. It's not an actual bestseller list. Whereas the USA Today bestseller list is the, is the most factual, accurate, like number of books sold. Um, so you can make the USA Today bestseller list and you can make the Wall Street Journal bestseller list um, self-publishing a book. Um, it, it's, it's not likely uh, if, if you don't sell copies, obviously, like the average self-published author, no, you're not going to make one of those lists. If you do it well and sell thousands of copies in week one, you have a great chance to hit one of those lists. Um, but you're right. Functionally, like we look at Amazon bestseller and um, for most people, like that's the most likely case scenario. And when we look at that, it's okay, let's get number one in a significant category on Amazon um, that's not underwater basket weaving or uh, some of like business, thing. health, yeah. finance, something like yeah, that. Those exactly. are relationships. Exactly. Those are legit. Entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, it's kind of like they're subcategories. They're not sub, sub, subcategories kind, yes. of, a, kind yes. of a thing. Yes. yes. They're meaningful uh, categories with real books. How many units do you need to move? And is it like within a certain time frame and that kind of stuff? If you move hundreds within the first day, um, you have a chance depending on the category. And then this, and there's calculators online that, that kind of calculate like, oh, the number one book in this category probably sells X amount. Um, but yeah. definitely if you sell a thousand books within the first few days, you will hit number one in a lot of significant categories. Um, and so, so is that kind of the, 
kind of like how I said, if you can move 10,000 units in week one, that's where you're like, let's talk, let's talk literary agent. Let's talk publisher. Yeah. It, but, it, and then it's like, if you can figure out a way, how could I move a thousand units in, in, within the first week? That's like, okay, let's go, let's go blow up a number one Amazon. Like that's yeah, what it takes. Exactly. Exactly. And, I and like what that. I think is super important is, is we talk about this all the time is like kind of this concept of the, uh, the Toyota Camry and the sports car uh, launches. And most people look at book launches like a sports car. <laughs> it's fast, it's sexy, it bur burns up a lot of fuel, aka energy, mm -hmm. and it's gone in a flash, right? It's like, shoo, okay, that was our launch week, right? But we really look at like, how do we create a Toyota Camry type book that's Amen. just going to keep selling month after month after month? And how do we in our fundamental marketing, yes, we want to have a strong week, uh, a strong launch week, but like, how do we make sure that we're setting up to where long term, this thing's going to keep selling? So there's a lot of strategic marketing stuff, but building virality into the book, like a, a lot of just kind of fundamental things there. And so really that's what I would encourage people is like, make sure that you're solving a fundamental problem, uh, the, a painful problem that people have, that you get reviews that you, and, and then that you focus on marketing strategies um, beyond week one, because that's where a lot of, I mean, that's where the money is from both a book sales perspective. Sure. But also from a, using this as something that's like going to continually um, driving, uh, drive lead sales and referrals for your business. Yeah. So this is, this is part of why we had Chandler on. Obviously I've known him for years. Yeah. You know, I know his brother, like these, these are legit guys and the stuff they're talking about, uh, we believe in, we, we've done, we do. Um, and uh, here, you know, that, that's what brand builders exist is to grow your platform. It's the, we're playing the long game and, and that is why Chandler's here. So here's one of the things that Chandler and I talked about his team will do a free call with you if you are seriously considering, okay, what are the next steps look like? Um, if you go to brandbuildersgroup.com slash SPS for self-publishing school, uh, go there just like, just like most, many of our clients did. You, you know, they'll do a first call with you. They'll figure out where you're at, what you're up to, and then they'll kind of go, here's some ideas, here's some pointers. And if, if you're a fit, then they'll, they'll tell you how it works. But brandbuildersgroup.com forward slash SPS as in self-publishing school. And, and, um, and so you're, you're willing to do a call with people just to help them sort that out. Right, Chandler? Totally. Yeah. And, and our goal is, I mean, it's, it, I think it's, it's, it's a helpful 45 minutes. It's get clear on your goals for your book your challenges with your book and your next steps. So how do we take this from something that you've been dreaming about doing, thinking about doing, it's been on the maybe next year list for like five years in a row. And, and how do you actually make this happen and make this a reality? But, but in the process of doing that, like save time, um, save money in the process and then, and then create an asset. It's going to build your brand, um, which I think is just huge and, and, and a fundamental piece of, of what you guys teach and, I just wholeheartedly believe in the whole process and in this as, as a part of the process. Yeah. I mean, the book, the, it's a, it's a, it's a critical essential piece and self-publishing is this yeah, necessary step. And you guys do self-publishing better than anybody that I know. I mean, it's all you do. It's why you're here, right? It's why we is like, this is their world. Like they live in self-publishing books all day, every day. So go to brandbuildersgroup.com forward slash SPS. If you're interested, you know, if not, keep hanging around. And then when the time comes, you know, you can take, you can take their team up on it. Chandler, man, I'm proud of you, bro. I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I think you can help a lot of people in our community with this, you know, important piece, this really important piece of the whole brand building journey. So thanks for being here. Absolutely. Absolutely, Roy. Thank you so much for having me.